Hello again. Thanks for joining us for session four of six um, about building form and placement standards today. Uh, thanks for joining us for the prior three sessions. And uh, by now you're becoming a, an expert in understanding about form-based codes. Uh, so thanks for the time uh, today. Building form is the um, topic of uh, building size, width, depth, height, and shape. And you might just say, well, don't buildings just go from top to bottom and it's, it's about how tall they are? And the answer is, well, that's part of it, but, but there's a lot more to that answer. Um, and you can see here the different sizes and shapes of buildings. And so building form standards are a way to regulate and predictably um, allow um, different types of forms that are uh, local to your area or that you want to make local. Uh, and so um, uh, these kinds of standards uh, both shape the individual buildings, but they also independently and, and incrementally shape the public realm. You can see here in the middle of the slide, you can see the, 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 the tree-lined street and sidewalk uh, being independent, individually shaped by each of those buildings. And the, the reason uh, building form standards are, are important and purposeful is because conventional zoning uh, simply just talks about height and setbacks and, and leaves it up to the individual um, project to uh, describe and fill um, what you see in, a, in the red outline. Uh, that's, that's all it just says. It says you can fill your building all in there and then come the, the meetings with the neighbors and, and, the, and the local um, community saying, well, okay, that's, that's too much or, you know, or it's too big. And so uh, it's really uh, helpful in a form-based code to have building form standards that speak to the priorities and, um, and uh, what's acceptable in, in the different neighborhoods. And so that, that information then gets um, uh, summarized into these intent statements that we talked about in the last session where they're qualitative um, statements about the building size and whether or not they're attached or detached and the size of the setbacks and maybe the overall number of stories and maybe the, the ground floor has a particular height that needs to be uh, uh, maintained uh, to, to maintain the physical character in an area and the kind of, of frontages, uh, porches, stoops, story yards, or other, other types of frontages that make a particular character. So the first topic we wanna to talk about here is where the building can go or more formally, building placement and setbacks. And so the, um, the gray area on each of those lots in the example on the screen here identifies where the building can go. That's the buildable area. Your building can, can be placed anywhere in that gray area. And then outside of that, um, those are setbacks. And it, what's interesting here about the form-based approach is that do you see the, the little um, diagonal uh, band in the area H and I on the on those two examples, there's a little cross hatching there, a little line, diagonal line in the gray area. And what that's saying is that in order to sh effectively shape the public realm in this particular zoning district, the buildings need to be in that location in the front and side streets to provide that um, beautiful relationship between the facades on each side of the street and the street trees and then and the street itself and then the sidewalk that you walk on, all that, there's a relationship between the facade, the distance between the facades and the sidewalk and how it feels. And so that's gonna be different, say in a main street versus a neighborhood. And so that's a very important aspect of how a form-based code uh, incrementally shapes the public realm in addition to the other setbacks that are, that are regulated. Then you can put a building on there and, and, and through your building size, footprint, and massing standards, you can start to fill out that allowed gray area that was shown on the previous slide with the allowed building size and footprint. Um, and you can see here, um, there are um, issues of pedestrian access and on-site open space, as well as the overall footprint of buildings. And, and there are options for um, how, to, how to do that. It might uh, in, in one case, you might say there might just be a, a maximum width and a depth of the building footprint. In other cases, you might say we're going to uh, further articulate that building envelope um, allowed by the zoning by using building types um, that have different shapes and sizes. And so we'll, we'll be talking about that in session five. 
And just looking at the importance of, of building placement and setbacks, um, I can't tell you how many codes uh, I look at that have a lot of great information about built building form and uh, frontage and streetscapes and the public realm, but they don't identify where the parking can go. <laughs> and so the, uh, the, the example on the right, although you might say, well, that would never happen in our town and, and maybe architecturally it wouldn't, but the parking area um, happens in a lot of, of modern codes that, that don't address the uh, issue of, of where the building can go versus where the parking can go. So when you think of, of building placement, also think of parking placement. And then building height, very important. Uh, and you know, it's, it's, it's like signage. You know, a lot of cities look at signage in a, in a, a very pejorative way, a very negative way, and building height is, is similarly uh, seen by a lot of regulations. And um, yes, you don't want a building that's too tall uh, in the wrong place, but you also want to let buildings be effective and have nice uh, tall floors uh, for a lot of um, light and, and uh, more of an airy feeling um, in those floors. And so what we found is that instead of only regulating overall height, as you see in D, uh, the item D here on, on the screen, to also regulate item C, the, the maximum height to the highest eave. We found that th that combination of, of measurements is very effective. And if you only had to measure one or you could only measure one, we would recommend C, uh, the maximum height to the highest eave. And all you have to do to, to, to really understand the, the value of this is to go look at a building that complied with the maximum height in a city um, but either dug out the site to lower the building below the sidewalk where it's measured uh, or squatted, you know, a floor and, you know, slotted in another squatty floor into the volume of the building. And, and people look at it and say, well, that building looks squatty. Uh, so you want to really consider building height um, uh, the way that we're talking about here. Again, uh, parking placement, we talked about this and why it's important. Um, and then the outcome of all this, why does all this make sense? Because, you know, conventional zoning doesn't look at these individual elements. Again, going back to session one, conventional zoning was, was never intended to make anything. It was always intended to prevent bad things from happening uh, and, and determine, depending on what bad means in your community. And so that's certainly half of the, of the question. But the other question is, the other half of the question is, well, what are you going to make once you stop what, what you don't want? <laughs> what do you want? And so the form-based code uh, coordinates all this into these physical outcomes. And you can see here um, these four key characteristics of these outcomes. So thank you very much for your attention today. And we look forward to you attending in the next session.